Talmor, Sheshin Mugachi. Talmor is my home. My family have worked the land for generations. My gran says the island does not belong to us, but we belong to the island. And we must be ready for a great evil is coming. And death follows with it. Listen and subscribe to the latest season of Undertow, The Harrowing, a story glass production presented by Realm, available wherever you get your podcasts. The thing that I fought tooth and nail to bring my son into is Dungeons and Dragons. That is the ultimate solution to parenthood. I'm Alexis Ohanian. In my podcast, Business Dad, I'm hoping to open up the conversation about balancing careers and family. I talked to Rain Wilson. I wanted to learn more about Rain's advice to play D&D with your kids. Business Dad is available now, so be sure to listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Hello, world. Welcome back to Thanks for Coming In. I'm your host, Jillian Clare. I hope you're having a lovely day, quarantined in your room, probably. I, how many shows have you watched on Netflix? Because I think that I have, I've watched everything. I'm currently um, in the middle of Madam Secretary, which I'm, I'm super into right now. Um, that's been a highlight. <laughs> I don't know. What are you watching? Let me know. Let me know what you're watching because I feel like I've I've gone through all of the popular things and I don't know what else to watch. I'm reading a lot, which is good. Um still not at my my goal though for the year, which isn't even a huge goal. It's a pretty moderate goal. Um I'm still hoping I can make that. Um yeah. Uh what else? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to say at the beginning of these things anymore. Um, if you can make a donation to Black Lives Matters, that'd be great. Before we get the show started, I just want to say if you can make a monetary donation to blacklivesmatters.carrd.co, you can do that. Um, they have a bunch of places on there where you can donate, which is really cool. It has... Um, I'm going to literally click it right now. Here, I'm clicking. Donate. Um, <clears throat> donate to mutual aid funds. Donate by sharing BLM links. You can donate by streaming a playlist. And there are a bunch of other things. Victims, protesters, Black-owned businesses, organizations, other important places, international donation places. Literally so many ways you can help. Um, and other than donating, you can sign petitions. You can text or call your politicians. Um, it's a great resource and I, I really like it. So uh, click that link. It's in the show notes. Today on the show, we have Gregory Zarian. He was recently nominated for a Daytime Emmy for his work in Venice, the series, and I really enjoyed getting to know him. So here's our conversation. Everybody, please welcome Gregory Zarian. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Welcome to the show. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for inviting me and having me and all that good stuff. I'm great. How are you? I'm doing good. Doing good. You know, just hanging out, doing the thing, taking it day by day. <laughs> and you're doing the thing with a great, you have a, the best voice. Thank you so much. It's just so bizarre to me. I feel like when I listen to my own voice, I'm very annoyed by it. So it's it's weird to me that people think it's good, but it's great. I mean, I like that. <laughs> no, please, if you could call me every day and just leave a message of your choosing, and then, yeah, I mean, we could find it like a daily theme, kind of like you know, yeah. you your underwear for the day. We'll just you know, like <laughs> happy day, inquisitive day, stuff like that would be great because truly, you have the best voice. Perfect, I'm down. And then, should I also do your outgoing voicemail? <laughs> um, you know what, you can. And, okay. <laughs> um, yeah. And just give me like, make every day a different mood, like, mm. Monday, like magical Monday, Tuesdays, like thoughtful Tuesday, Oh, Whimsical Wednesday, um, throw it away Thursday. Love it. Fun Friday. Fun Friday. Um, s let's go sexy Saturday. Oh yeah. 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 And, and then, um, uh, 
something lazy with Sunday. I don't know. What's a um, S word? <laughs> say, you say me Sunday. Oh, there you go. I love it. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> So you were uh, recently nominated for a daytime Emmy. How exciting is that? Are you over the moon? You know, it's, um, thank you. Uh, you know, I'm a lot of everything. I don't, uh, you know, being a fellow, fellow performer, actor, you, you get it. And mm-hmm. uh, it's this, you know, as simple as it says, like, you know, Sally Field years ago, oh my God, they really like me. And, um, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm moved, I'm touched, and I'm super grateful. I don't, um, I don't take any of this for granted. And I, you know, I'm grateful for every step of these past 25 years that got me to what? I'm pre-nominated to what? I'm I'm nominated. nominated. (laughs) And um, it's, you know, it's, especially with where we are, Jillian, in the world with, the pandemic and people staying home and just life being very different. Yeah. I feel that I'm left more with who I am. Mm. You know, so when I got the nomination, uh, I, I, Matt and I were chatting a little bit and Matt is my um, awesome publicist. And I, I just wanted it to be special. So he was texting, we were back and forth a little bit and I had gotten to my house and I, I have a God box and I write a note to God with everything between me and God. And I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to, I didn't write my note to my God, to God yet. So I sat down, got a piece of paper and a pen. And as soon as I was getting ready to write, dear God, if this is meant to be, thank you, Matt called. And he said, wow. uh, congratulations, you're Emmy nominated. And between you and me and everybody else, you know, the tears came and it yeah. was. It, it, it was just this moment of, wow. And I wouldn't change it. I truly, truly wouldn't change it. It was um, so. How, well- how kismet. Like, that's that's such a beautiful story that you were sitting down writing a letter to God and boom, you get the call. It is, You know what it is? It really, really is. I have a dear friend named Peter Chrisman, and he is very much an advocate for the God box. And I have my God box and my God box is the Scooby, the Scooby-Doo mystery machine. Stop it. That's amazing. (laughs) And uh, it, it's just, you know, when you write a, it's right. in like, dear God, you know, if this is meant to be, thank you so much. And what is your will? Because I believe in turning it over and giving it up and just saying, here, take it universe, whatever God looks like for any of us. And um, it was really, really beautiful. And it was also, you know, special to share it with Matt, mm. you know, because uh, we have a short history and a great history to date. And it's just, uh, it, it just meant, and again, with with the world being more shut down, it meant more to me. Not that it yeah. mean a lot to the people that I've had in my world and my teams and my camps and just people that have loved me. Mm-hmm. It was just this really beautiful moment of, Wow! Look what look what just happened, and um, I'm super grateful. And even talking about it, I'm uh, getting a little Aww. teary because you're an actress. You you get it. Yeah, no, it's true. I, I mean, I've been nominated for you know smaller things and won some things from different like film festivals and stuff like that. And even that, it's just it's so nice when you just get that small acknowledgement of like, oh hey, I'm good. What I'm doing is good, and I'm on the right path. Exactly. You know, I, congratulations on your nominations and your awards. You know, it, oh, it, I get it. And it means something real quickly. My father, uh, my father and mom, my mom and dad were immigrants. Mm. And they came to this country with the American dream and they both survived wars and, wow. you know, war torn countries. Uh, my mom, Berlin, Germany. Um, and wow. my father, yeah, I don't. So to come to this and you know, my father in the Middle East, so to come, Armenia. So to come wow. to this country with that dream, and then all of a sudden you have children. And I have an older brother named Vincent, who's very corporate and great guy. And it's just, it's what he did. And my identical twin, he's in the business. And my dad just didn't get it. And he thought it was a pipe dream. And our mom passed away 20 years ago, and she was happy for what my success was then. But here's the beautiful part of 
you know, what you and I do is really hard. And yeah. <laughs> every step, every breath, every every stamp on every envelope and every sign-in sheet and everything has been a second to where I'm at. And our father passed away eight years ago. But here's the beautiful part of life. He uh, unfortunately passed away from uh, myeloma, multiple myeloma. It's a blood cancer. And oh, he... So sorry. Thank you. Uh, and we were great. Like I, for all these people that, you know, talk about, oh, my parent passed away and they weren't great. Good. Say what you got to say. My mission in us being down is pick up the phone, call your parents, call your loved ones, tell them what you're upset about, tell them what you're happy for, ask a thousand questions and just be good with the relationships that aren't good because yeah. when they're gone. You can't get them back. So when my, uh, my dad was in the hospital and I had a guest star on the mentalist and I said, Hey pop, you know, my show was on tonight. Do you want to watch? And he said, you know what? I'm good. I'm going to, you go home. So the next day I came in and his nurses said that he sat in his hospital bed and he watched the episode oh. and he said, that's my boy. I'm really proud of him. You're going to make me cry. This isn't a crying podcast. I know, oh, no. but- <laughs> <laughs> so sad. No, but it's a, can I say, but, but how great that it's you beautiful. Know, you know, what we do is just so flipping hard. Yeah, so it to is. have our parents see a struggle and, hey, pop, lend me 20 bucks or, hey, mom, can you can you lend me gas money to, hey, I'm really proud of my boy. It's just so again, when you ask me what it means, it's a it's 25 years of it means all of that. And I, I'm grateful. So I'm humbled and I'm grateful. And um, I'm going to be really funny now. Go. <laughs> You're going to be funny. Oh, that was such a beautiful story. Okay. Yeah. Whew. Okay. Got to collect myself over here. Um, so 25 years, you've been in the business for 25 years. What was the first thing and what made you decide to start acting? Uh, you know, uh, I, I, somebody, uh, somebody came up to me. I was working at a department store and they said, are you an actor? His name is Tom Racina. He was one of the head writers of days of our lives at the time. Yeah. And I said, I am. And next thing I knew, I was on a soap opera. I was uh, I was kind of like a jock in college. And amazing. I, uh, you know, it was it really was. It was wild. Like, wait, what? I have to, <laughs> the you have to do my hair. What? I have to memorize lines. Uh, it was with uh, Missy, who plays Jennifer Horton on she, she soap opera royalty. And mm-hmm. It was way back in the day. So during our lunch breaks, we would lay out on the roof at NBC. We we were just, we were kids being kids. And I just, you know, I wasn't ready. And, but it was great. And, you know, I got to meet, like, I remember there was a moment where I was standing in a sound booth. And, you know, if you're walking to and from set at the time, mm-hmm. they lock you in this soundproof booth. Yeah. And, I was standing in there with Deidre Hall and she plays Dr. Marlena Evans and she is soap opera royalty at its best. And Jillian, like she had the big curlers in and I just remember looking at her going, oh my God, you were a lecturer woman in Dinah Girl. I'm I'm on a soap (laughs) opera with you. Oh my gosh. You know, you, you, it, it was wild. And I, I was on there for months until I wasn't. So did you have a lot of scenes with Missy? Because when I was on Days, I played Missy's daughter. Oh, okay. So you played Abigail. <laughs> yeah, I was Abigail for wow. like a year, year and a half before they switched me and made me, you know, age like five years over the summer. <laughs> and you're like, wait a minute, I can age. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, wait a second, I can play 16. I'm 12. It's fine. I can do that. <laughs> uh, can we gush about Missy Brennan right now? Missy uh, Reeves? Missy Reeves, yes. She is the absolute best. I loved working with her. And most of the time on the show, I was screaming and yelling and crying at her. And she was amazing. Like, absolutely amazing. What was that like for you? It was great. I loved working on days. It it felt like a, a family. You know, I had my school teacher, Bobby, on that set. And she was fantastic. She taught me yoga when I was like 11, which was cool. Namaste. Um, namaste. But it was great. I loved the the family environment. And it's, you know, it's it's great training ground. And it's huge work. Those The people on soaps are, are just like, they're powerhouses, man. They can do anything. 
You know, they are. There are, you know, people. And it's so interesting now because of where we are. It used to be Channel 2, 4, and 7, and those were the only. Mm -hmm. And now with all awards coming out, look at everything that is now streaming and Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime. So I truly believe soap operas are unsung heroes of getting in the trenches of learning your craft and creating a character and and just getting down and dirty um it's yeah. true so missy i hope you, i hope you're feeling this love and here's what i love about her is every time i see her at events or appearances because mm. i was i was in the very beginning of the possible boyfriends you oh. know so uh, i played brent anderson and it was like you know jennifer and brent and then it wasn't <laughs> <laughs> i mean i left i left the cafe that day and somewhere in my mind, because I remember my last words were, thanks, Jen. And, <laughs> Wait, do you think I'm coming back? <laughs> do you think they're going to bring Brent Anderson back? What, what did and you they say? Could. I, I'm being sarcastic, meaning my character walked out to never be seen again. Oh, how sad. But, I mean, you've done so much since then. So what was after days? Did you just uh, hop around doing a bunch of other stuff? Uh, you know, uh, I, I was um, written off days because, uh, you know, I wasn't ready. I wasn't great at the time. Uh, so I kind of left with my tail between my legs and I hightailed it to Europe for a couple of years to Whoa. try my hand in international modeling. And here's what I loved is I had to go away from it to understand all of it. Um, mm-hmm. You know, when you live in foreign countries and you don't speak the language, it really makes you humble. And mm. It was some of the best time. You know, I mean, listen, I've 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 lived in Italy, Milan, and Paris, wow. Berlin, Germany, Munich. So I wouldn't trade any of it. I speak a couple languages now. That's cool. I, I saw the German wall come down. Like I've wow. I wouldn't I wouldn't trade any of it. And, you know, back is what you said. It's you know, being on a soap opera and, and doing what we do, it's work. Mm. It's you know, you have to break your butt to get good every day and yes. there's no there's no finish line we're, like no. we're, we're always trying to get good yeah always always improving always working at it always doing something to to help your career and your craft absolutely and and here's the truth for you and I to you know know exactly what the 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 recipe for being great at our craft is the recipe changes every flipping day Mm-hmm. Like, what do you like? You know, I, uh, you know, I did a, I did a screen test for One Life to Live, and oh. it was a scene between me and a girl, and it's this great scene. It's a kissing scene, and okay. in my mind, I wanted to make the kissing scene as authentic as possible. No one told me that when you're screen testing for a soap, you don't use your tongue. <laughs> And I was like, what? And she's like, wait, stop. And I go, what happened? She's like, you don't do that. I'm like, why not? So it's stuff like that that <laughs> is part of my um, past that makes me go, oh, my gosh. Do you <laughs> really do that? Yeah. Do you have any other uh, funny audition stories in your back pocket? You know what? Uh, I do. I have, you know, here's, as I said earlier, my identical twin, his name's Lawrence. He, uh, mm-hmm. I was a. Uh, you know, he was a he was a, a theater actor in high school and in college. Okay. And he was actor of the year. And when I was when I came home to Europe from Europe, he went back to he went to Europe and took my modeling book. Oh wow! Uh, when he came back modeling using my book, I was I had become a very successful successful commercial actor. Mm. So every time we would go on auditions together, I would get the part. I would get the TV part because I really decided like, listen, I'm not gonna. You know, when days was over, somebody told me that I wasn't talented and I, uh, and it was honest, super honest. I, I wasn't ready and I'm grateful that that happened because it makes me take my job seriously. So long story short is my twin wasn't booking any TV and film. So he became Mm -hmm. a lifestyle expert. He put the acting on hold. Mm -hmm. I started working and working and working. And a year and a half ago, we were called in for the tv series counterpart it was on oh. star star it uh, was on stars network uh-huh. it starred academy award winner jk um jk simmons oh i and love him um 
uh, this amazing group of actors, Nazanin Bonyandi, uh, and it was written by uh, Justin Marks. Mm. And he, the series two years in a row, 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow. Uh, it was Entertainment Weekly's top 10, two years back to back. It was genius. The show is about a character living alternate worlds. There's mm. an alpha and a prime. So in the first season, everything was J.K. Simmons playing the same part. Mm-hmm. And it just got, as the director said, I wanted to make it more 3D. Oh. So for season two, they hired these scientists and we uh, and they brought in identical twins to play the same part. Oh, but fun. both characters to swap out the characters. So my team at the time, manager, who I'm still with now, hi, Michelle, <laughs> called and said, hey, they want to see you at Counterpart. Okay. Uh, the office of um, Schiff and Audino, mm. and they were awesome. They brought me before. Um, love them. So my twin, Lawrence, and I, we go in and we audition um, pages and pages, and we also speak fluent German. Wow. And that was one of the criteria of, um, thank you, Mom, the criteria of <laughs> the characters and if you break it down it's kind of like east and west berlin so we had to audition in english and german so i went up first but here's the part about casting that we all think it's got to be a certain way when i walked in from washing my hands lawrence was hugging the casting director and you and i both know we kind of don't hug them yeah she was so genuine about it wow she gets us up there and I'm like, oh, Amy, I guess, I guess we're hugging now. So <laughs> I went first. I'm like, I'm Gregory Zarin. I'm reading for this. I spoke a little bit of German. Did the first scene. She gave me a redirect. Did all mm-hmm. six, five, six scenes. Redirects. Great, great, great. So then it's Lawrence's turn. Since Lawrence does live TV, he's mm-hmm. on Hallmark's Home and Family. So everything is delivered to camera. Jillian, you know, like if you're <laughs> called and said, Jillian, you know, we need you to do a self tape for Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. You're going to play it off camera. Right. Yeah, of so course. He gets ready. He stands back and he, it's seriously like I loved him and hated him all at the same time. <laughs> so he starts his lines and he starts delivering and she goes, okay, Lawrence, can you stop? And he goes, what? And she goes, can you not play the camera? And he goes, oh gosh, I am so sorry. I you know, doing live to the TV. And she goes, no, it's fine. Just, just take a breath and do it again. So oh, no. he <laughs> steps away and he starts again. He starts delivering his lines and he goes, you know, I'm going to just, I'm just going to do it again. Cause I'm really not feeling it. And I'm thinking, Oh my God, what do you do? Like <laughs> for you and me, it's, you pick up over, over the foible. You, you continue. Yeah. You just keep going you, until they stop you. <laughs> so she goes, no, no, it's okay. So then he starts again and he goes, you know, God, I'm really sorry. Gregory's looking at me and he's kind of making me nervous. My head is sinking. And she goes, Gregory, do you want to leave? And I go, Lawrence, do you want me to go? And he goes, oh, my God, no, no, no. I'm having the best time. (laughs) So he gets through all of it. And she then says, can we do an end slate? So I'm like, hi, you know, Gregory's here. And this is my twin brother. Well, he starts speaking in German. Mm. But he starts doing it comedically. It's a serious show. Oh, my God. And in my mind, I'm thinking, what the F? We just lost this job. Yeah. Uh, They loved his freedom. They loved the personality. And, I mean, we ended up booking the job. Wow. We ended up spending a summer and a half ago in Berlin, Germany, for months getting paid to do what we love doing. But here's what I want to say about that is he was so fearlessly, authentically free. Right. He didn't apologize. He's like, so so to other actors, be fearlessly free and have a great time because what you and I think we know, we don't know. As a podcast network, our first priority has always been audio and the stories we're able to share with you. But we also sell merch. And organizing that was made both possible and easy with Shopify. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell and grow at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage? Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. 
They have an all-in-one e-commerce platform and in-person POS system, so wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. With the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms, Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers. Shopify has allowed us to share something tangible with the podcast community we've built here, selling our beanies, sweatshirts, and mugs to fans of our shows without taking up too much time from all the other work we do to bring you even more great content. And it's not just us. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. Shopify is also the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Because businesses that grow grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash realm, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash R-E-A-L-M now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash realm. You can shop from anywhere doing pretty much anything. You might shop while working, eating, or even listening to this podcast. And however you shop, we all know and love the thrill of the hunt. But do you also know how to get the thrill of the best deals? Because Rakuten shoppers do. With Rakuten, they get the deals they love with the most savings and cash back. And you can get it too. Start getting cash back at your favorite stores like Sephora, Nike, and even Expedia if you're looking to get some travel in. And getting cash back doesn't mean you have to miss out on sales because those can just be stacked right on top. It's easy to use and based on a simple idea. Stores pay Rakuten for sending them shoppers and Rakuten shares the money with you as cash back through PayPal or check. Download the free Rakuten app and never miss a deal. Or go to Rakuten.com to start getting the most bang for your buck. That's R-A-K-U-T-E-N. I just I love that he was like such an embarrassment almost to you when you're in there and then you book it because he's being himself. It's just so funny, but also exactly how this industry works. It changed my auditioning for everything. I don't I was on Westworld. And when I went in, I brought bits of him to it. I'm like, you know what? I said, I'm going to do this and I'm going to walk <laughs> in and I'm going to be like, hi, everybody. And it you know what? I think we're so afraid of the audition. Mm hmm. Because here's the truth. Justin Marks and his wife, Rachel, and this group of people that I worked with in Germany with Lawrence, they become family. Right. Yeah, that's what happens. You know, just like when you said, you know, your family of days, you know, you spend 10, 12, 18 hours a day with this tribe, this group of people. They want to know that you're great to work with and you're fun and you're Mm -hmm. easy to work with and you are not going to be this pain in the ass so it's true i uh i had an audition when i was 19 that was hysterical because the character in the description was described as being like a phoebe from friends so just kind of out there and like you know not really on planet earth and i knowing myself because i'm i'm a pretty sarcastic daria type of person um (laughs) i i was like there's no way in hell they're gonna see me as this character if i go in as me so i went into the room as a character because i'd never met those casting directors before they thought i was the funniest person in the world because i was so out of my mind and then i ended up booking it and calling and when my manager told me i was like well what the hell am i supposed to do now like they think I'm an idiot. And I went to the the wardrobe fitting and the director was like, so I hear you're like really smart and you read Shakespeare and shit and you fooled us all. I was like, yeah, I'm sorry about that. I just really liked the movie. Don't you flip it. No, what was the job? Come on. Uh, it was a, it was a movie called the kitchen uh, with Laura Papon and Brian Greenberg. It came out a while ago, um, played at Austin and Tallgrass, And it was a great experience. I absolutely loved the movie, but um, it was yeah, funny. It was hysterical. They they all uh, they all got fooled, and for a second they were like, "What the fuck just happened?" And I'm like, "Sorry." <laughs> no, I love the fact that you're saying "fuck." Who knew? Oh. <laughs> I could have. I'm the, I'm seriously being. I was being so good. So fucking okay. hell. Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> but don't you find it fascinating? Like we don't like what we know. Like I mean, here's here's. I'll say this. Uh, I've been lucky to model for years, mm. and LA models has. You know, I believe every modeling job is an acting job waiting to happen because I'm telling mm. a story. 
You know, what we when you get to set every day on the movie with Laura Papon or any modeling, to me, it, you're telling a story. Yeah. And I want to make every job an experience. Mm. So I um, was lucky enough for years, over 10 years, to be the fit model for the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising. And uh, they oh, I love that. for fit them. So that the students that come in and they, you know, they fit the clothes on me and then we do mm. the big debut show. So one year I go in and I did costumes and the, my, my, the client at the time, Jim Watterson, who gave me a shot a long time ago when people didn't and mm. changed my trajectory and he holds one of the largest places in my heart. I was going to my fitting and um, behind my rack of clothing, there were all these gowns. And I said, uh, Mr. Watterson, what is that? And he said, Mr. Zarian, try on a dress. And I said, what? He said, try on a gown. And I said, uh, okay. So I thought, you know, for the people that have gone out on a limb for us, Jillian, we're going to say yes. Yeah, and, of course. So, and and here's the thing. I was paying, getting paid thousands and thousands of dollars a show. So, of course, I'm going to try on a gown. Right. Come, come to realize it was the... I was trying on all the gowns that Patrick Swayze wore in Tu Fong Wu, Thank You, Julie Newmore. Wow. It was the year that they were nominated for an Academy Award for Best Costumes. That's amazing. So so Patrick Swayze and I wear the same size gown. We wear the same same size heel, size 15, women's heel for men. Oh, my God. I love it. And I got to walk down a runway with Julie Newmore. Wow. In the original Catwoman. Yeah. So to, so to do what we do and see the guys that are like, I'm not wearing a dress. I'm like, you guys suck. Yeah, just you, wear the dress. Wear the flipping dress. And just let me say, it. I got legs for days. <laughs> Seriously. Some of the, like going back to what you said, some of the stuff we get to do. It's Disneyland and Disneyland and Disneyland. Oh, it totally is. Some of it is absolute just fun, like just fun. It's the best stuff we get to do. And then and then you have the shitty stuff. You know, I uh, I went to a a, and here's the thing now that what we do when we do what we do, it's, you know, most people want everything off book. And for those that don't Mm -hmm. know what that is, you have to have it memorized. And they're not just a few words. They are pages of dialogue. And, and sometimes monologues on monologues on monologues. Eight pages of monologues. Yeah. And I blew off two evenings of events to go to this casting. And they were two and a half hours deep. Mm. And I walked in and I saw stars that I knew. There was... um from Dynasty, Charlene Tilton. I'm like, oh my God, you're Charlene. Oh, wow. You're Lucy Ewing. Hi. And yeah. we've met before and sweet and kind. And she had been waiting for an hour and a half. And this guy comes out and we were 20 people deep. And he said, yeah, I just want to let you know the casting is going to, uh, for those of you that have two scenes, could you choose it down to one scene? And I thought oh, it would be like 10 hours that I could have given up. That's so, that's one of my biggest pet peeves. But I know that they need to do it at sometimes because of timing and all that. But man, when you hear that and you've prepared all of that, you're just like, but I worked so hard. Um, yes. Look, I'm not saying a word. I am just smiling for me. My <laughs> God bless you casting people that have said that to us. Yeah. Um, so I picked my scene and they were whittling down the group of people he came out again and then said, and I think I was like 15 deep down to eight deep. And he said, mm-hmm. yeah, I just want to let you know that uh, they, the casting director said that they are going to stop you during your audition just because of timing. Oh, no. So I said, you mean they're going to stop? Yeah. So it's my turn. And it's this huge room with 10 people at a at conference tables. Oh. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Nice to see you. And I went in. And I said, oh, my God, Charlene Tilton, TV royalty. She's great. And they're like, yeah, we love her. And I said, you know, your associate came out and they, he said, can we, you know, you're going to stop us if you yeah. don't like, you know, you're going to stop us. And I said to the casting director, I said, do you mind if I, since we've caught up and there's only two people behind me, do you mind if I 
just go through my four pages because I really worked hard on it. She sat back, she gave me a look, and she said, let's see what you got. And I Ooh. went, I and I said, I love a good challenge. Yeah. I took a breath. I stepped into it. She stopped me barely three quarters of the way down. Hmm. And I went, she went, that's it. Saw what I needed. And I went, okay. Mm. And I thought, thank you for having me. Um, I hope you guys have a great afternoon. Yeah. You know, it was one of those that made me go, okay. Like, I don't know if she was proving a point because I was, because here's the truth. I pour every second of every day into every audition. Yeah. I make it my own. I make it my best. Um, you have to. But it bothered me to the point of, and here's the truth. Maybe I did. Maybe I wasn't the choice. Mm -hmm. And I was proud of myself because I, at that one moment, spoke up for what we do and said, hey, I want to give you the full four pages because I worked really hard on this. And uh, that's yeah, that's like ballsy. I don't think I would have had the guts to say that. Um, you know, I've got some big balls and <laughs> I, 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 do I have a couple of seconds left? Do yeah. I, have a second? yeah. I was, uh, I was on, um, I was lucky enough to be cast in, uh, the pilot, the advocate. It was for mm. ABC a couple of years ago and this powerhouse casting office, Ulrich Dawson, Kritzer, UDK. Yeah. Sean Dawson, who I love, gave me my first job on VIP with Pamela Anderson. Wow. They are very generous and they're also very tough. Yeah. Here, he, I did my audition. I walked out and I thought, I want to do it again. Mm. And I've never done this. I walked back into the office. They have dis, they had dismantled the casting suite. Wow. And they said, no, 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 Greg, you're good. Well, you, you don't need to do it again. I walked in and I said, could we just give me one more shot? Yeah. They brought Sean in, they brought the director in. They let me do it a few different times. I walked out, got a call that I was pinned. Wow. The director said to me, hey, listen, you walked in in a three-piece suit. You walked in, you were the only guy that was dressed for the part to a T, and that's what the breakdown said. Hmm. Got to give it to you. Not many actors would have come back in and said, let me have this shot. I respect that. So. Love that. Everybody listening, have balls. <laughs> and say thank you and please yes. clean up the casting room. Yes. Ask the associate how they are. And it's not the casting director or the assistant's job to pick up our sides. Put no. it back in the slot, throw away your water bottle. And when you get a job, send a note. Send a note. Send them a cupcake. Send them a something. Send them a candle. There you go. Damn it. Give them a candle, damn it, Jesus! They gave you a job. They can I tell you they did. <laughs> they, seriously, they gave you a flipping job, and I send notes to wardrobe, hair, and makeup. Oh yeah, because uh, those those people are the ones who like on set. They're your your go to people. They're the ones who keep you happy. They're the ones who check in on you. I oh, have had. Um, such great relationships with so many people in wardrobe and hair and makeup. I mean, those are usually the people who turn out to be like my best friends on set. But they're also your lifelines. Oh, yeah. Big they, time. They, you can look and go, okay, did I suck? How was that? Was that good? Yeah. You know, even a script supervisor. Mm -hmm. Thank you, please. And here's the deal, people. When you were sitting in that chair waiting to go on set, a couple of things. Try not to be on your phone. The director, J Jonah Nolan on Westworld said, no phones on set. So I thought Love that. Love that rule. Meant, but I thought that meant no, no phones on set. Mm -hmm. So I left my phone. I spent two 18-hour days without a phone. And I remember every second, every moment, every minute. Here's the deal, people. When you are wrapped, it doesn't mean that you leave your Coke and your water bottle by that little chair you sat in. It means that you Run pick it, it up out. and throw it away. And you don't have to text everything. Be in the moment. I remember everything Tessa Thompson did sitting in her chair waiting. Fascinating. She's gorgeous. She's I love a, her. She's a she's an actor's actor, Vincent Cassell. And you got to be in the moment. It it makes a huge difference. I've 
when I, cause I've directed a couple films and, uh, both of them had teenagers in them as, you know, the lead cast. And the second one, I made a rule where they had to leave their phones in the school room or with their parents and they couldn't bring it on set. And it was amazing. It was so much nicer. They were actually like connected to each other and talking to me and focused on the scene and not looking at their cell phones. And holy hell does it make a difference. Well, here's the, th- and yes, here's, I'm throwing this out there too. One thing I do too is there was a girl that I worked with on Westworld and uh, she's super, super, super talented. And we had a break here and there together. And I asked her personal questions mm-hmm. and she looked at me and I said, we're supposed to be business partners. Tell me your favorite color. What's your favorite number? Where were you born? And do you have any siblings? So when we start delivering lines and looking at each other, There's history. Right. I now know that you like a pink daffodil. Yay me. (laughs) Yay me. Um, I want to be in one of your films, Jillian. Let's make it happen. I can play play a dad. You can play dad, yeah. Let's do it. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, No problem. (laughs) What do do I have to do? Uh, You have to uh, memorize my favorite flower as well. Okay, and I and I am Emmy nominated, so that yeah. what? did I just what? Drop that? I'm sorry, did you just did say I, you're Emmy I, nominated? Wait, for Venice the series? Who? What? Emmy winning, multi Emmy winning Venice the series by soap royalty Crystal Chappelle. What name is that? Huh? Yeah. What? <laughs> First two seasons on YouTube, second three on Vimeo on demand. Did I just throw that out there? Everybody, go watch right now. It's such good. And can I say this? It goes back to what you said a long time ago. Soap actors are the hardest working actors yeah. because they have to, you know, they had to fight to be, I mean, here's the thing. People, people came home to watch soap operas. It was their fantasy for a lifetime. And mm-hmm. all of a sudden this media is now turning on to what's the internet and streaming and live. So the, the stakes are higher. Yeah. I, I love soap actors. I, I put soap actors in everything I do because I think that they're the most talented and they work the hardest and they're most, they're the most respectable people on set. They just know what they're doing. And they hang up their clothes after wardrobe. Thank you. Yeah. They hang up their clothes. They clean up everything. They just, they're, it's like theater actors. And that's why I I love soap actors so much is because they do have that same type of work ethic as a theater actor, which I think is huge. So in advance people, Pick up your cups and say thank you and please. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and just be done. nice. Just be nice on set. Just be, be nice. Respectable. Don't you thank? Don't you? I, somebody asked me recently. Uh, again, I love my Matt Gibson, and we um, have been able to talk to some really great people. And we are just, just you know, we're we're really having the conversation about just people saying hi more and asking more questions mm-hmm. and being more mindful and being more like, what do you need? How can I help? What can I do? Are you okay? Can I get that for you? And in the bigger picture of what we're going through, I feel we're coming back to basics. Yeah, totally. I've had random people that I haven't talked to in several years text me and reach out and be like, hey, I just wanted to check on you. And I'm like, whoa, hello. Nice to say hi to you. And thank you so much. And say, I love you more and say, please more. And yes, you know, there was a guy I talked to today at Chase Bank because somebody decided to take my credit card and um, oh, compromise no. my account for that one dollar at Exxon because you needed that dollar more than me. Uh. The guy I spoke to, Leonardo, I said, how are you today? And he said, what, sir? <clears throat> and I said, please call me Gregory. And he said, OK, Gregory, what? And I said, how are you today? Hmm. And he said, uh, I'm OK. And I said, are you? having a good day and are you talking to nice people and he goes wow i'm you know i'm having a really good day and i appreciate you asking absolutely why wouldn't i ask you're helping me so why can't i just inquire about your flipping day i love that i love your energy you're you're so cool cool man are we hugging right now yeah we're virtually hugging <laughs> um i'm hugging on the i'm hugging Okay, because my head is tilting toward the right. Okay, so I'll go, you okay going I'll go that left. Way? I'll go left. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been so great to talk to you. Where can people find you on social media? Uh, thank you for asking. Um, everything is really is easy at Gregory Zarian. So Instagram at Gregory Zarian. Twitter at Gregory Zarian. Uh, my website, GregoryZarian.com. 
and Facebook, Gregory Zarian. And um, yeah, well, I just want to throw out one quick shout out. My sister-in-law, you know, uh, masks are now, you know, when we wear, when we wear our masks, mm-hmm. we're of course, protecting ourselves, but we want to protect the people that we love and people that we come in contact with. Yes. She has an amazing company called Masks for a Cause. Mm-hmm. And you buy one, one is donated. And there are women's sizes, men's sizes, and um, kid sizes. And they oh. are super fun. They are super themed. Please know that when you buy one, one is um, being donated. So I'm going to throw out to your listeners, um, if you go out and you let them know that uh, you heard this and uh, you say in the message box or whatever that you listen to our our, our podcast, I will uh, I will match it. So if you buy one, Aww. I'll buy one just to um, – to make a difference, you know, yeah. I, she, she's a talented woman and I love her. And every day I wear my mask, I go, I love you. Thank you for saving my life. So I love that. Thank you so much. Everybody do that. Can you say the website one more time? Masks for a cause.com. And it's on social media at masks for a cause. And Julian, here's the thing too. Uh, you find you, um, Log check into uh, her website, and if there's one that you like, let me know, and I'll have Matt get it to you. And uh, it's my thank you for having me because it means a lot. It really does. Oh, thank you so much, Gregory. It's been so wonderful to talk to you. You've put a smile on my face today. No, and you're going to hire me. I can't wait. <laughs> when this crazy shit is over, <laughs> let's do stuff. Hashtag fuck yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for coming on. Take care, sweetheart. Be well. Bye. Thank you again to Gregory Zarian for coming on the show. I'm super excited that I am um, I was able to meet him. I love that I get to meet new people even though I don't actually leave my house. It's really nice. Uh and if you're looking for that link again, it's massforcause.com. It's going to be in the show notes as well. Um buy one and one is donated plus Make sure you mention the podcast and Gregory's going to match that donation as well because he is just a stand up freaking dude and we love him. And it's been great, guys. I hope you have a wonderful day. Tune in next week. I'm talking to Stephen Kramer Glickman. He uh, he shares a story about a very famous ogre on a very famous stage. If you catch my drift. <laughs> Tune in then. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening to it right now. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your dog. Social media is uh, also a thing. And those links are in the show notes. And as always, thanks for coming in. Contained herein are the heresies of Radolf Buntwine, erstwhile monk turned traveling medical investigator. Join me as I uncover the blasphemous truth of a plague-ridden world, that ours is not a loving God, and we are not its favored children. The Heresies of Radolf Buntwein, coming January 2nd, wherever podcasts are available.